Hello and welcome to my video. In this video, I'm going to try and create which is probably the most famous cellular automaton of all time, Conway's Game of Life. It's a simulation of a set of rules, and these rules are as follows. So, the world is made out of a grid of cells. Each cell of the simulation is either alive, represented by a black cell, or dead, represented by an empty cell. In each step of the simulation, each of the living cells will check its surrounding neighbours. Depending on how many living cells are surrounding it, something will then happen to the cell that was checking the neighbours. If there is less than two living cells, then the cell will die due to underpopulation. If there is either two or three surrounding living cells, then the cell will live on to the next generation. And lastly, if there is three or more living cells surrounding it, then the cell will die due to overpopulation. So that is what the living cells do, however the dead cells will also count their neighbours. And there is only one rule for this, if there's exactly three living neighbours surrounding the dead cell, then the dead cell will turn into a living cell due to reproduction. And that's pretty much it, so let's get into creating this now. So like when I made the Predator and Prey simulation, the first thing that I want to do here is to get some kind of representation of the cells drawn onto the window. When I made the Predator and Prey simulation, I made it at one pixel equal to one cell. However, this had some problems, because sometimes it was a bit hard to see what was going on. So for Conway's Game of Life, I've decided to make it so that one quad equals one cell, which means a lower resolution, which would make it a lot easier to see what was going on. For testing, I have made it so that each cell just has a random shade of grey for now. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, each of the cells is a lot larger, which is going to make it a lot easier to see what is going on. And now that I have a drawable representation of the cells, it was now time to implement the rules. Before rules can actually be implemented, I needed to have some kind of representation of whether the cells were alive or dead. And for this I simply just went with an enum class, which has two types, alive or dead. The obvious option would have been to go with boolean values, but I decided to not do that because that would have decreased the readability in the code. For now, for testing purposes, I'm just going to make every cell either randomly alive or dead, which is going to make them either black or white. And this is what it looks like. Um, so now that I had a drawable representation of the cells, as well as a representation of the, you know, the cells themselves, whether they're dead or alive, it was now time to actually implement the rules for real this time. This is simply being done by using a few for loops where I loop through all the cells and then count the alive neighbours surrounding them. And then using a few if and switch statements I apply the rules that I described at the start of the video to the cell currently being checked. And here is the result, and as you can see it's pretty terrible, something must be going on because all of the cells are basically dying out instantly. So I decided that rather than going for the random start point, I would instead go for a manual start point. This simply means that the player sort of chooses what cells were alive and dead at the start and then presses spacebar to actually begin the simulation. You can see me here turning the dead cells into alive cells, and what I'm attempting to do is to create something known as a gosfer gun. A gosfer gun is simply an arrangement of cells which shoot out these things called gliders, where gliders are a group of living cells which just move infinitely in a direction. And this can be seen in action right here, where you can see the gliders moving from the gosfer gun down to the bottom right of the um, simulation. Now, while creating this input thing, I realised I actually had a major logic error in the code, and when I realised this, it meant I could go back to the random arrangement at the start, and as you can see, it just works absolutely perfectly. You can see lots of gliders and other things just moving around the window infinitely. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That is Conway's Game of Life. I would now like to take a moment to thank my super Patreon supporters. So yeah, thank you Stanley Morris, Synthetic, Timothy Gibbons and Alchemic. So anyways, once again, thank you for watching, enjoy the rest of the simulation, and goodbye!